Stand-up paddleboarding, canoeing and kayaking are a great way to explore the Broads National Park. Before you start, it's important to take some time to understand the rules of the river and how to be safe on the water. It's relatively inexpensive to hire or even buy your own craft, but we recommend you undertake some training with a qualified, experienced and insured instructor first. You'll be able to make sure the sport is right for you using good quality equipment and learn techniques that will make your adventures safer and more enjoyable. Search online for trainers accredited with the British Stand-Up Paddleboarding Association or British Canoeing. Always wear a buoyancy aid when doing any paddle sports. Very experienced paddleboarders may wish to use a waist-mounted inflatable life vest. It's important that the buoyancy aid does not restrict your movement and fits correctly so that you can get back on your craft if you capsize from a canoe or a kayak or fall from a paddleboard. A registered school or qualified instructor will be able to advise what's most appropriate depending on your experience and where you plan to go. If you're using an inflatable board, canoe or kayak, always inspect it every time you set off and ensure that it is inflated to the manufacturer's recommended pressures. It is imperative that people undertaking stand-up paddleboarding always wear a leash that's appropriate to the environment and conditions they're paddling in. Leashes prevent your board from drifting away if you fall in. A leash which attaches at the ankle or just below the knee is normally sufficient, but if your experience level allows you to paddle in faster flowing tidal waters, then a waist-mounted leash with a quick release toggle is highly recommended. This makes it easier to detach yourself from the board if needed during an emergency. Check your leash for signs of perishing before you start. Before you set out, plan your route so you know how far you are going and how long it may take. There are several paddle trail routes available on the Visit the Broads website. Check tide times and the weather forecast so you are wearing appropriate clothing. You should always take a phone inside a waterproof pouch that is easily accessible. It will help you check your precise location and call for help in an emergency, which you should do by dialing 999 and asking for the Coast Guard. It is also useful to store other items in a waterproof dry bag, such as a change of clothes, drink, snacks, a small first aid kit, proof that you've paid the relevant toll, some sun cream and insect repellent. Try to paddle with other people when possible and always tell friends or family where you're going and how long you plan to be. If your route changes or if you're delayed, let someone know. Paddle sports can be tiring and you should be aware of your own ability. Avoid busy stretches of water if you're inexperienced. Consider how easy you'll find it to climb back into the craft or back onto a board after a capsize or fall, as it's not as easy as it may look. Please note that only very experienced paddleboarders should venture into fast flowing or wind affected water. Paddling in the more tidal waters of the lower reaches is not recommended unless you are fit and able. Inexperienced paddlers should explore quieter areas in the upper reaches of the waterways or follow known paddling trails. Alternatively, you can book onto a guided tour or trail with a qualified instructor. Travel on the right-hand side of the river at all times, unless it is unsafe to do so. If you're in a group, please do not congregate with other paddlers in the middle of the river. You may find that sailing craft tack or zigzag across the river Please give them adequate space to manoeuvre safely. Never try to pass in front of a sailing boat unless told to by the sailing boat skipper. Keep alert to other river users, such as larger powered boats, and make sure that you're aware of any potential hazards approaching from either direction. Try to anticipate where other boats are going. It's not always obvious if they're preparing to moor or turn around. Other river users should be looking out for you, but don't assume they have seen you. Do not deliberately capsize your board, canoe or kayak. If you capsize accidentally, try to remain calm and float on your back. Take a few moments to recover and let your body adjust to the water temperature. Stay with your vessel and move over to the shore if you can. Whilst most of the broads is publicly accessible, some dikes and ditches are privately owned and do not have public right of way. Look out for signage to help you avoid trespassing. All stand-up paddleboards, canoes and kayaks, including inflatables, that are used in the Broads navigation area or adjacent waters, are required to pay a toll before they are used. You can find more information about these on the Broads Authority website, as well as details of places you can get your craft in and out of the water. 
During warmer spells, you may see a blue-green coloured scum on the water. This can indicate the presence of toxic bacteria. Do not paddle in areas where this is present and avoid coming into contact with it. If you start to feel unwell after taking part in paddle sports, please seek urgent medical advice. When paddling, you should cover open wounds, avoid swallowing the water, wash your hands before eating or drinking and shower after paddle sports. Don't forget to check, clean and dry your craft after your paddle to stop the spread of non-native invasive species. Have fun and paddle safe.